All right, so uh, we'll see how this works. Uh, we'll see if we can get this going. It's a little quick video. I, I don't want you to be this guy. Let's see how we do with volume, all that good stuff. You hooked into the internet on this thing? Should be. Should be, I'm guessing. Wi Fi? I turned on. It's not on. Oops, sorry. Oh, yeah, that, that, so it's pulling it up now, so if you just. Yeah, I can't promise volume. You uh, you're pulling it out. As loud as we can get it, sorry. Is it the same computers you had yesterday, Jake? No. You're, yeah, that can yeah. be powered for that. Yeah. Yes, sir. It'll work right there. It'll work. It'll work. We're just going to need to plug it in. Power stripping in or power cord? Get the technical difficulties taken care of. Dispatch 17, uh, I'm, I'm northbound on the freeway uh, south of uh, the River Road and I, I got a visual of uh, what looks like a, a traffic hazard over on the southbound side. Uh, look, it looks like it might possibly be a, a small a small cat or it, it doesn't look like it's moving but it, it appears that it's affecting traffic. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit the freeway up here at uh, the River the River Road. In fact, uh, in fact I'm, I'm taking the off ramp now so that I can uh, so I can go ahead and just get turned around uh, and get uh, get over there to that uh, that traffic hazard. Uh, I'm uh, merging on southbound now, dispatch, and uh, I'm going to get into, uh, into traffic here. Uh, get off. I'm going to go ahead and have to break this ramp. Uh, I've got I've got the brake in place now. Uh, trying to trying to get some people slowed down behind me. I want to I want to try and build up a few cars uh, here behind me, dispatch before I before I get up there. And uh, all right, uh, dispatch. It looks like I'm I'm coming up on it now. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely a cat dispatch. It appears to be a. Uh, a, a black and white type cat. It, it kind of has a little spot on the uh, on the side there. Uh, it's it's about twenty one. I, I think. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely Car now, dispatch. I'm, I'm on the. Uh, I'm on my portable radio. I'm. I'm, I'm checking on the cat, and uh, yeah, it, it. It clearly looks like it, it. It's been struck by by several vehicles, dispatch. I'm just. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, move, move it over here on the. Uh, crash uh, down on B21. Uh, uh, the scanner's putting out that uh, there's, there's a big fire involved. Uh, can you, can you just, uh, 
Yeah, make sure that the officer stuff he's aware that there, there's a pretty bad crash on his beat. <laughs> Better have only been 10 rounds in that match. <laughs> well, we want that. <laughs> okay, so obviously that guy just wouldn't shut up on the radio. We don't want to be that guy. The big thing with radio communications is uh, using your ABCs uh, accuracy, brevity, and clarity. So you want your transmissions to be as accurate as possible. You don't want to be putting out false information over the radio. Short is better. Uh, again, you don't want to be that cop talking all the time. And trust me, we have some of those officers that are like that and it drives me crazy to hear it. Radio communications are supposed to be short. Phones are for long conversations. Uh, and clarity, make sure that you're pronunciating <coughs> Make sure that you're speaking clearly because radio transmissions inherently muffle or mar uh, garble stuff. Uh, they're, not, they're not inherently like phones. They don't push out the information or the, the sound as well. So make sure you're speaking as clearly as possible. We used to have an officer who did the, sounded like you put the throat, the mic right down his throat and push the side of his throat to talk. That's all you heard. You don't want to be that guy either. When you're using a radio, uh, basics are hailing. When you're talking to somebody, it's, hey you, this is me. So for us at the police department, we go 673-630. 673's me, 630 is dispatch. So it's, this is me calling you. The fire department does it the other way around. They go, hey you, it's me. They go 630 engine one. So dispatch doesn't really care how you do it as long as you hail them. Hailing means you let them know you, you want to talk to them. 673, 630. And they wait. Because you don't know what dispatch is doing. You wait for them to respond to you. It's not 673, 630. I got a uh, 14 car pile up on Williston Road and, and they've already got probably 17 phone calls on that 14 car pile up. They didn't hear words you just said. So you've got to let dispatch respond to you. We talked about this already. Keep the communications brief. Uh, Long-winded communications can block, just like that little video we had. Um, again, radios are for short communications. That's why we use 10 codes. It's not saying that you guys should, but 10 codes are to help us keep things short. It's not to hide what we're doing from anybody. Um, and again, I, I said it earlier, if you need to make long communications, use your cell phones. Not while you're driving, um, but those are the places to use long communications, cell phones, landlines. Phonetic alphabet, the reason we use phonetic alphabets is so that there is uh, clarity in your communication. When you're saying um, a name on the radio without spelling it out, they might not hear the proper name. If you're trying to say name of a street, we've got a lot of streets that are pretty close. Woodbine, wood, well, you know, how many wood streets do we have? Probably 10, too many wood streets. So, using a phonetic alphabet helps us avoid uh, confusion. We talked about different types of phonetic alphabets before we really got going here. There are basically two types, the military, which is the NATO phonetic alphabet, and the police. Again, I don't know why police are, is different, to be honest with you, other than we're not the military. Uh, and Essex Police Department uses the NATO phonetic alphabet. So there are some police departments that use that alphabet. Again, like I said earlier, our dispatchers they really don't care which one they use, but know if you're not using the police phonetic alphabet, it might be a slower response because they're trained in their heads to listen for the police phonetic alphabet. And when you change that up on them, they have to think about it. 
where the police phonetic alphabet is automatic for them. And as you can see, there's there are some change, there are some pretty good differences. Why would you use ten codes on the radio versus plain talk? Ten codes are confusing. For you guys, not for me. Uh, but yes, ten codes on for for um, fire departments. They're using plain talk. A lot of police departments are switching to plain talk because uh, incident command dictates that you use plain talk. Um, the ten codes were, were were good because uh, they were fast and easy. What ten thirty two weapon? Everybody knows it's a weapon. Who uses it? The problem is that they ran into after 9 11 was 1032 weapon for you is a, is a lunch break for Colchester. So he's been in the Colchester. Correct. But you're on the right track, Jake, but you're, you're state to state is where the problem lies. Yeah. Uh, like Vermont, all the major ones 1032, uh, 1010, which is a fight. Um, 10-8, which means I'm in service, 10-7, out of service. Those are pretty much universal statewide. There's a couple little variances. 10-38 for us in South Burlington is a traffic stop. 10-75 is a traffic stop for the state police. So there are some is issues that are arise there, but yeah, so the reason they did 10 codes originally was because it was quick. And it's, it's easier than plain talk. But after 9-11, what they found was state to state, when you start bringing people in on mass casualty incidences or mass terror incidences, they don't have the, the communication gets garbled. Because like Jake said, my 10-10, bite in progress, could be there, let's have lunch. You know, it could be New Hampshire's, let's have lunch. So, <clears throat> The idea is plain talk, everybody knows what you're saying. If I get on the, the radio and say 673, 630, they come back, I say, I'll be out on a traffic stop on Williston Road in front of the poorhouse. Right now that'd probably be a horrible spot because Williston Road's a mess right now. <laughs> um, but everybody knows exactly what I'm saying. The other side of 10 codes was, 10 codes were used so that scanner land didn't know exactly what we were doing. Uh, in, in law enforcement, sometimes, believe this or not, sometimes we don't want the bad guys to know what we're doing as cops. Um, so we would use 10 codes to hide what we were doing. Problem is now everybody can figure out what the 10 codes are. I mean, you can go on the internet and find out what 10 codes are anywhere. Um, and if you don't get every single one of them, you'll get 80% of them off the internet. Again, it doesn't matter what you use, 10 codes, plain talk. I'm guessing you guys are more plain talk than 10 codes. Be brief. It's not a time to read a chapter in a book over the radio. Um, the biggest thing I can say to you is be brief. Over and out. That's courtesy on the radio. Uh, especially for us, um, Using 10 codes replaces over and out a little bit for us, but transmissions of over and out lets everybody know. Military uses this perfectly, right? Hey you, this is me, over. It means I'm waiting for you to respond. Hey you, this is me, out. It means we're done this conversation. Uh, so something you guys can incorporate to let each other know, I'm waiting for you to give me more information is over. Yeah. Guys, one thing that drives me berserk is when giving direction to people and it doesn't necessarily, I don't need to, I just want to know you heard it. And when there's silence on the other end, particularly the radio issues we've had, we just need a 10 4 or whatever. 10 4 or it's copy. Crazy to me. And I, I hate having to then go ahead and then ask you if you, do, if you heard what I asked you. So please just, please put a period on the end of the sentence. If, if nobody responds to you talking, nobody heard it. 
And that's what over and out and copy or 10-4 is. And you, you hit it right on the head. It's a great way to say it. It's your punctuation at the end of your, your transmission. It's like when you write a sentence out, you put your punctuation. That's what over, out, and 10-4 uh, or copy is. It's saying, I heard you, or for us 10-9 is, can you repeat that? Because I didn't hear you. The other big thing to talk about or to know when you're talking about radio communication is everybody can hear you. It's not a <laughs> private phone conversation. This isn't where you're talking about, hey, let's go get lunch, or hey, uh, I got a date with Susie tonight. Uh, this is where you're being professional, you're talking about work, you're keeping it brief, and you remember that whatever you say, people hear. It's also recorded. Maybe not you guys, but I know every police communication is recorded. And if we're not recording it, somebody out there is. And I would guess that there are some strange people out there. I wouldn't be surprised if there is somebody out there recording everything that you guys are saying on the radio as well. Um, so just remember that. Good rule of thumb is don't say anything on the radio that you wouldn't say in front of your wife or your kids or your mother. So if you think about it that way, that is radio communication. Keep it short, keep it clear, keep it professional. And that pretty much is all I have to say is, except for when you're at work, try to stay positive. <laughs> Questions? Justin. When you're trying to, for example, uh, particularly if we're trying to get to the police department, and you had mentioned this earlier, and you you know you anticipate that your call might be busy, it's the whole, like, did they hear me ring the doorbell the first time conundrum? Right. Like, I, I always get hung up, what's, when can I repeat my hello, I'm here, yep. that's not too soon and impolite. So think about it this way, and this is what I tell new cops. When you're busy on the road, the dispatcher is three times busier than you are because they're answering the radio, they're answering the phone, and they're dealing with the walk-up window. Inherently, just off the bat, they're three times busier than police officers. You add a busy call or a hot call into that, and they're that much more busy. Give them a few seconds. Ten seconds, maybe would be a pretty good thing to, to give them the opportunity to deal with whatever they're dealing with. They are phenomenal multitaskers. They can be talking on the phone, writing something down, and with their elbow reach over and hit the, the mic and say, highway, I got you, I'll be right with you, or uh, I'm on an emergency call, I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. Uh, they do that with cops all the time as a 10-6 uh, putting out fire call. And six for us is, hold on a second, I'll get right back to you. Um, so if you happen to hear a dispatcher say 10-6, because again, they're just, they're on automatic and they might just reach over and hit the computer screen that says we're talking to highway now and say 10-6, and they might seem very curt or very abrupt in their transmission to you, don't take offense to that. That means they're busy, they'll get back to you as soon as they can. Uh, so, rule of thumb is call them once, wait five to ten seconds, call them again, uh, again, wait a few seconds. If after about three times you don't get through to them, there might be something wrong with the radios. Uh, that's been known to happen. Uh, if that being the case, phone call. Um, two things, exactly what, one of the things just emphasized what you said. If you guys come across an accident, the dispatcher's getting phone calls on that accident, probably. Um, we put fire in the scan on the uh, truck radios, and the portables have fire and police on them. So you, listen, you can listen to them. I know it's annoying for you folks to listen to them while you're doing your work, but if something comes up and you hear them talking, you know they're busy. So you're trying to, to, to get in touch with them you know they're busy, they'll do the best they can. Secondly, 
as long as I've been here, there's been a situation where because the dispatchers are busy with fire and rescue and multitasking and a bunch of things, when public works is chit-chatting or telling stories or, or jokes or whatever we're doing on the radio that's probably not within the scope of his PowerPoint today, they'll turn us down on purpose. They don't need to hear all that while they're trying to concentrate and do their job. Some problems with that is, number one, something happens, now they're not gonna hear us, we cause that. Number two, dispatcher one gets done his shift, dispatcher two comes on, doesn't know that's turned down, something happens, they don't know. So if, if we can abide by what he's uh, teaching us today, they'll probably turn the volume down with less and be more responsive when we do call. That, that's a true statement. Uh, dispatchers are taught to, at the beginning of their shift, set their volumes, make sure their volumes are all set. I will tell you that the highway volume is lower than the rest of them because, quite honestly, you guys talk too much on the radio. Uh, and the dispatchers have too much to deal with to listen to your conversations on your highway channel. What they listen for from you guys is highway to PE. Then they're like, whoop, okay. So, like I said, they're phenomenal multitaskers. They're, they're like uh, those NSA computers that scan multiple phone calls at a time and listen for keywords. That's what they do, they listen for keywords. And when they hear highway to PD, then they'll go, oh, I gotta turn that up, and then they'll start talking to you guys. Because they're so busy though, that it might take a couple of times for them to hear highway to PD. So, hail them, wait for their response, and then tell them what you need. And again, know that they're wicked busy, so clarity and brevity and accuracy, the ABCs, are gonna be important to them. Perfect example, that was just now on Willis Road, because I was out getting coffee this afternoon and I heard, I heard Greg, Highway to PD, uh, twice within you know, the usual period, and then Adam talked to him and said, well, I'll, I'll call him on the phone and get your information for you. Well, not two minutes later, I heard PD, whoever was on that scene, called dispatch and said, have we heard from uh, Highway yet? <laughs> yeah, I think they were looking yeah. for some road signs, shut down the road signs. But the point is, everybody was talking, PD was swamped, the dispatcher was swamped, and nobody was hearing anybody <clears throat> speak, you know, stuff happened like that. What happened? What happened? Car rolled over, hit a, hit a telephone pole, and then rolled over, I guess. Oh. Um, so the other thing to, to make sure that you do when you're talking on the radio, and sometimes this is hard because it always happens to me, just when you think, okay, nobody's talking, you grab the mic, you hold it down for a second, you open up that, the airway, and somebody else is talking. Son of a... So try not to walk over each other. Um, because all the dispatcher hears on the other end is static, and that's another way for them to say, I'm just turning that down because I'm sick of listening to static. Um, so make sure the radio is clear when you think of it like some of you in the room probably are old enough to remember party lines. You gotta make sure before you pick up the phone and start dialing, nobody else is on it. That's kind of the same principle with uh, a radio. Make sure nobody else is talking before you start talking. Yeah. Would it be better if possibly for them to hear instead of saying PD, saying 630? They would probably hear that quicker than they would PD. Um, but yeah, they're so used to PD to high or highway to PD, however you guys hail them, that either, either or will work for them at this point. Um, I will let you know that at some point in the future, don't know when, there is going to be some sort of consolidated dispatch, regional dispatching for Just like the 911 thing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know when in the future, whether it's two months, 14 months, 72 months down the road, I don't know when, but you can count on seeing some sort of regionalized municipal dispatch in the future. What that will mean for highway, I don't know. Uh, I know it's going to regionalize 
police and fire and ambulance services. Don't know if that still means you're going to have the ability to use your radio to call the police department and let them know about something or if it's going to revert to landline. That's going to be something that we're all going to have to figure out as that pushes out and goes forward. Um, I don't know. So hopefully, is, is hopefully you'll deal? still maintain your ability to talk to the police department by radio. Is that a done deal for Chittenden County? It I has passed. It was, in, it was on the ballot for, I think, eight, eight towns, and it passed seven of them. How it goes forward? Shelburne was the only one that Shelburne's did the only one that did not pass it. Essex didn't put it on their ballot. The rest of the Chittenden County towns that put it on the ballot passed it. How it plays out going forward, I don't know. I, I know that the Board of Governors, the people that are in charge of all that, the decision makers are way higher up than me. Um, and they're, they're figuring that out now. And at some point, they'll tell me what's going to happen. But, um, you know, I just, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if it's if it's officially a done deal or if there's still the opportunity for it not to happen. I don't know. I use, uh, as far as a phone number to contact dispatch, I use 658-1050 because it's easy to remember 1050. Is that a, a valid line or is there a line you prefer us to use? The best line? is to call is uh, 8464-111. Um, 1050 line will work. It's not. It's, it's actually, the 1050 line is actually the line that 911 uses, so we try not to tie that one up as much. Um, so yeah, we would prefer that most calls come in on 8464-111. Yeah, so they both do. They both go, the way it works at the police department is 911, we try to keep that 1050 line open for 911. Uh, so when the dispatcher sees that, they can see it comes in from 911, they know that's a priority call. Um, but the way phone calls work is um, nine, eight, the 1051 will bypass our automatic phone tree. It goes right to dispatch. The 8464111 will bring you into a automated phone system. Uh, Matt Fargo's voice will come on and say, you've reached the South Burlington Police Department. Uh, please listen carefully, yada, yada, yada. Hit zero right away, it'll bypass that and get you into dispatch. Don't, don't tell everybody, but when you get the phone tree, hit zero and it'll, it'll pump you into dispatch automatically. Thank you, that's good to know. Eight, four, six. Oh, so what may happen and has happened to some people over at City Hall uh, on occasion is if you call and the dispatcher is busy, they're going to triage the phone calls. So if you happen to call into dispatch and it's busy, you're going to get South Burlington Police Department, is this an emergency? If it's not, say no. If it's an emergency, say don't say, hey, this is Andrew from Highway, because all they're gonna hear is, um, they didn't hear yes to their question, it's an emergency, please hold, and they're gonna put you on hold. Again, like I said, think of them as a NSA computer, they're, they're scanning for keywords. So if they ask you, is this an emergency, answer them yes or no. If it's an emergency, say yes, and then say, okay, what's the nature of your emergency? There's an accident on Williston Road. Is that the one in front of the poorhouse? Yes, it is. Okay, we already know about that one. Thank you very much. And they're going to push you off and deal with whatever's coming in next. Um, because when you call in for an accident on Williston Road, they've probably got six other people calling in. Uh, we get 911 calls, multiple 911 calls. Uh, and 911, all they do is just, because there's multiple 911 dispatchers, they don't know that we've already gotten the information. They just keep pushing it through. And our dispatcher's like, is this about the accident on Williston Road? Okay, we already know about it. Thank you very much. And they're just pushing through, excuse me, just pushing call after call after call. Again, don't take it personal. If they sound 
you know, a little bit harried or they're a little bit curt with you, that's just because they are busy. So that's basically what I have for you. There only one dispatch at a time? Pretty much. Um, during a couple hours from like one to four every day, there's two dispatchers on. From nine to 11 at night, there's two dispatchers on. And one day a week, there's two dispatchers on each shift. So like one day a week, we have two day shift dispatchers. One day a week, they're both on at the same time. Two evening shift dispatchers, same thing. One day a week, they're both on at the same time. That's just the way the schedule rotates. Uh, and again, who knows what'll happen with a consolidated dispatch. My hope would be that there will be multiple dispatchers on at the same time. That's one of the reasons they want to do this, so that better coverage. Because quite honestly, we're one major incident away from being overwhelmed in dispatch. And this incident out on Williston Road, pretty much with two dispatchers on, took everything they had to deal with it, you know, because they were just that busy. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.